Good morning. It is day five on Galapagos Islands. We are still on Isabella. It is 6.55 a.m. Breakfast is being served at my guest house in five minutes. But I took a little walk over to the square. Check it out. This is the main square. Very exciting stuff. Um, to get some coffee. Because frankly, yesterday I found the coffee at the guest house to be a little lacking. Although, I don't think it was the coffee. I have a feeling the milk was a little bit off. But just in case, I needed a boost before today's expedition, which is a 10 mile walk across a volcano. So, no wildlife today, no giant turtles, no sea lions, no iguanas. A lot of walking across volcanic rock, but it should be really cool. Um, let me show you another thing that's cool. See the road here? This is like the main road where all the restaurants are in, in Isabella. I don't know if you can tell, it's not really paved. Well, I think underneath it may be, but the whole top of it is still covered in um, sand which is kind of interesting. I guess it adds a little bit of character. I don't know, what do you guys think? So here we are after a about 45 minute bus ride, arriving in the highlands of Isabela to start our 10 mile hike of the Volcan Sierra Negra. There is the sign right there. And we are registering to enter the area and then getting on our way. So after a two mile hike, more or less, we have arrived at the caldera for the Sierra Negra volcano that we are hiking around. This is considered the second most active caldera in the world after only Yellowstone. Hey, hey. So we are now about three miles into our hike around the Sierra Negra volcano and you know, one thing that's really interesting about Isabella compared to the other islands on Galapagos is that, well, I mean, this entire archipelago was formed millions and millions of years ago, of course, because of volcanic activity, right? And so every one of the islands here has one volcano, except for Isabella, which has six, and a few of them are still active. One of the really devastating eruptions for the island was actually in 2004, 2005, and that is because the area around here is where the giant tortoise population on Isabela used to live. And most of them incinerated in that, in that eruption. Fortunately, 22 of the tortoises were able to be rescued and from the different eruptions, and those tortoises are now in that breeding center that um, I showed you from yesterday. You're probably wondering, why are you in Galapagos seeing turtles, you know, tortoises, I'm sorry, in captivity? Well, that's, that's why on this particular island, the volcanic eruptions have really decimated the population. And so the breeding program is there to get all of those surviving adult turtles to reproduce. And what they do is that within five years, they let the you know baby tortoises out into the wild and let them do their thing and 
since the breeding program began, they've released about 2,000 tortoises into the wild. And they say that the survival rate has been around 40%, which is fantastic because in the real world, that would be much lower. So the goal is that eventually the population will be stable enough that you know, the breeding program will no longer be needed. And someday this area around Sierra Negra may one day be uh, home to, you know, a giant tortoise population once again. Truly out of this world. This right here are the lava fields from some of the most recent eruptions of the Sierra Negra volcano in 2005 and 2008.